Hey guys and welcome back. I thought I'd do a short video today uh, as a buying guide for the classic Saab 900. Uh, I know a lot of you out there probably don't need this information, you already own a couple of Saab 900s, but I'm aiming for perhaps someone who's going to buy their first Saab 900 and doesn't have a lot of experience and what to look for. So I hope the tips are useful and uh, welcome back to the classic Saab guy. In this buyer's guide today, we'll be looking at this uh, project, Saab 900 16 valve from 1991. And uh, yeah, it has been in storage for over 12 years. So it, I think it's a good example to look at for some of the problems that can come up when buying a used Saab 900. And I'll make some comparisons to my 1992 Saab 900 turbo that's actually in a lot better condition. So you can just see how things perhaps should look. So we'll start with the obvious, which is some of the rust that can come up on the wheel arches, very common with salt corrosion, as you can see here, especially in Sweden. And uh, yeah, on the petrol cap, that's quite uh, common to see on uh, cars here. But let's look at this. In the uh, boot, we have uh, problems with uh, the drain plug not really letting water out, and so we get corrosion in the uh, corners there, which can lead to um, corrosion on the side beams, uh, part of the chassis under the car which can be structural and obviously an MOT or inspection failure. The bottom of the doors very important quite common again because water gets trapped in those uh, rubber seals. As you can see on the rear door here it's uh, quite corroded. The edges uh, of the rubber on the uh, windows here are very common to get rust coming there. Uh, this is actually quite good on this example um, there isn't any uh, rust on the uh, screen edges. So uh, the link arms underneath the bonnet, uh, if you were to look at the top and then under the car to look at the uh, link arms, they can rust out and um, especially the mounts, so check those. You can see in comparison to the ones on my turbo, which are in very good condition. And don't forget the trail arms on the rear end of the suspension there and the mounts and also the shock absorber mounts, they tend to go on the front and uh, on the back. Obviously this is caked in mud because it's been in storage and just left for a long time on the farm. So yeah, also look at the spring mounts as well. Uh, so in terms of the engine, uh, you want to be listening for noises. Obviously I've never really heard rod knock on these uh, models, but uh, you don't want to have any rattling from this part of the engine because that could be timing chain. Gearbox, yes, uh, I mean here we can see uh, it's got some oil leaking on the gearbox where well, it's actually coming from the engine somewhere but just be aware of that and also you don't want any whining in third or fifth gear because that could uh, be a problem with the gearbox so just listen out for that. While you're under the bonnet you might as well check the oil, you don't want to have any milkiness in the oil, brown milkiness, that just means it could be a, a head gasket leak so check for that and while you're there you might as well check also the coolant and just check that there's no gunk inside the expansion tank because that can be common and uh, just slow down the cooling a bit and hinder cooling. Also you might as well check the uh, brake and clutch fluid because that tends to uh, get gunked up and especially if it's been storage for a long time you probably want to change all the fluids. So inside the car just check uh, condition of seats and uh, Obviously on these the roof linings tend to sag like on this one you can see it's been repinned very common So you just have to take that into consideration when thinking of a price You want to also be checking the dashboard uh, that can be prone to cracking if it's left in direct sunlight So uh, just keep an eye on that just make sure there is no obvious cracking and take that into consideration and you want to be checking your dials and instruments as well just to make sure everything's working and especially the uh, handbrake is very important here you don't want that to raise to the roof when you put it up you want to make sure that that's working so you don't have to sort of fork out for some new calipers and make sure that gear lock is is good as well because that's very important so going back to my uh, turbo uh, to do a little test for the turbo uh, to see how healthy that is you want to get your engine running hot and um, just uh, boot down on the accelerator uh, a couple of times and basically you don't want to see any white smoke coming out of your exhaust. If any white smoke comes out of your exhaust when you do that it's possible you could have a, a problem with the turbo, it could be on its way out, so just take that into consideration. 
One other thing to think about is obviously a service book, service history. If you've got history with the car, it's very good. So you can see with this one, we have lots of history and um, there's a very full service book. It's actually been taken care of most of its life and it's just suffered a bit when it's been left in that storage for 12 years. So there you go guys, I hope that was useful to you. Just some tips there that have really helped me over the years when uh, buying uh, classic Saabs. So uh, yeah, good luck with the purchase if you're planning on making one and uh, see you next time on the Classic Saab Guide. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care.